I haven't fully finished the second episode of the Cold, Cold Mafia documentary by Al Jazeera. Uh, I think it's close to an hour long. I'm about 40 minutes in. I just wanted to say this. Uh, number one, I'm not sure if I'm going to be sitting with Rutendo Matinyarare again to discuss the second episode. Um, from what I've seen, it doesn't really delve into Zimbabwean politics that much. And I'm thinking most of the things we'd have to cover would be mostly rehashing uh, what we discussed in our initial sit down. I may be maybe on my own doing a video uh, regarding the documentary. Uh, maybe I might find someone, I'm not sure. It's a, bit, it's a bit short notice and people are a bit busy, unfortunately. And I was, I was quite lucky to get Rotendo at short notice. First and foremost, please watch a movie called Catch Me If You Can with Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks. Really, really great movie that explains the psychology of forgery and fraud. Um, I think it's, it's either directed or produced by Steven Spielberg. It's a classic. Um, I've mentioned movies that I think you should watch. Margin Call being one. Um, Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps. The Big Short. Uh, there's a couple of other movies you can watch as well, um, just from a money perspective. Episode 2 speaks generally about money laundering and it introduces Mo Dollars, Mohammed Khan, who apparently may not, that may not be his real name, who launders money uh, through a South African bank called Sasfin um, and there's some dealings with the South African Reserve Bank itself. Um, money that is moved, money that is cleaned, it still links some Zimbabwean guys. Speaks about Simon Rudland, who's a tobacco, I think, billionaire in Zimbabwe. RG cigarettes, uh, cheapies, cheap cigarettes, illicit cigarettes. And by illicit, I need you to understand, there's nothing wrong with the cigarettes themselves. they normal, typical cigarettes. Uh, the difference is that they don't pay taxes. You know, uh, Anton Rupert, the father of Johann Rupert, uh, built a cigarette empire in South Africa with the Rembrandt Group. And they ended up getting into British American tobacco, and they went and they created the regulations. I can only believe that they funded politicians and other big people to ensure that other players don't come in. Like an RG with Simon Rudland. So they end up selling their cigarettes in the black market and not paying taxes. The taxes of cigarettes, I think, I could be mistaken, but they could be 50 to 100%, number one. Um, the concept of money laundering very easily is moving money that is from illegal proceeds, cleaning it in more decent businesses so that on the other side of the transaction it looks like the money uh, came from a good source i'll make an example if i have a game reserve and i have wildlife or i have something like ankole cattle which are a rare breed someone can bring me cash which i might store in in couches <laughs> which i might store in couches and once that cattle has been bought once that that, that game has been bought on the other side of the transaction when that money moves into other businesses it is seen as clean money some people use art and luxury goods as a way to shift money around some people use churches because when you look at art someone can buy your artworks in cash and then when i take that money that i've made from selling my artworks um, and i go and i spend money overseas in a dubai i go spend money in hong kong i go buy a car somewhere the person who collects the money on the other side is getting it from a decent source which is me i'm an artist you know, and then where they take that money does not matter anymore because the source is from me selling art. Some people do art, some people do luxury goods, your Louis Vuittons, your Gucci's and the like. Some people, like I said, do wild game, like your president, Sir Ramaphosa. Some people use cash businesses, the taxi industry, the spaza shop business. Some people use churches. In churches, you can donate money if I'm a pastor to me. What I do with that money doesn't matter because the people that receive that money know that it comes from a church, so it looks clean. I can be a motivational speaker going around the world. I can be a musician, an artist, where people are booking me for private events. I'm getting paid in cash. I go and I perform for some people in the Middle East, for some people in Nigeria, some people in Zimbabwe, some people in the DRC, and they think, yo, Penol is a superstar, like a burner boy, like an Akon, you know? So we will pay him 100,000 US dollars to perform. And I get invited every month. I collect that money in cash. But what you don't know is I have to spend that money in specific places. Those places I could be spending it in cash. I could be transferring that money. But the bottom line is when those people get receive that cash, I'm a musician boy. So it's clean money according to them. So a lot of people also use nightclubs and the like. There are people that run the world that decide what is legal and what is illegal. Those people seek regulations. But then, of course, those same people circumvent your reserve banks, your central banks. Those people break laws. 
when you try and find the source of the funds through something like a CR17 bank statements, all of a sudden the courts and the law are saying, no, uh, we're locking these bank statements and you can't see where that money comes from. These things are happening every day through some of the smallest, some of the biggest business people that you know. Some of the people that work in some of these uh, companies, of course, and some of these banks, some of these financial institutions, they get bribed. You know, and a bribe is something very simple. A bribe is if you've got children at a school and you go and you buy chocolates for the school teacher or you clean the teacher's car for free or you give the teacher a voucher for a holiday in Durban, that teacher is now under pressure to give your child good marks. It's a bribe. Now the bribe scale, the bribe scale to a point where you go to a certain company, you pay people 100,000 rand and they give you favor in that company. Some of the ways to circumvent bribes is to make sure that the people on the other side are put on your board of directors. I've said before that Cyril Ramaphosa, above board, was working with Glencore and Shanduga to supply coal to ESCOM. He was getting paid directors or chairman's fees, which is above board and it's not called a bribe. But the substance of that transaction is that he received money to make sure that he favors Glencore when it comes to some of the ESCOM dealings as well. Looking forward to maybe sharing some other thoughts. I'm going to maybe go through the episode again, write some notes, and maybe read those notes to you around the second episode of the Gold Mafia documentary by Al Jazeera. Not as heavy hitting as the first documentary that was focusing on Zimbabwe, Emerson Mnangagwa, Kamlesh Patni, um, Ewan uh, McMillan, uh, Emerson uh, Nangako, I think I've already said, etc. Hubert a Angel, you know, but it's still a, a worthy conversation, a still a worthy watch. Please watch it. I look forward to hearing some of your thoughts. I'm looking forward in this video and seeing some of your questions for me. What you maybe would like to know about money laundering, about how money gets cleaned, about SASFIN, about some of our banks. We've had banks that have been colluding in Forex in this country who got away with a slap on the wrist. I'd like to hear some of your thoughts. Penuel the Black Pen. Cheers.